Input. Und dann äh, kommt ein paar Fragen von meiner Seite. Und dann äh, ist es wieder ein Diskussionsrunde. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين وصحبه المنتجبين I am grateful to God for giving me this opportunity to be with you today. And I hope our session today would be a beneficial and fruitful session. If we look back at the history, we find that the Prophet of Islam started his mission in a society which by no means was giving any signal, any good news of welcome. <laughs> of welcoming a new way of life. Something we find about many prophets that their mission was not a fruit of that society. Sometimes in a society something happens which is the natural fruit or outcome of that society's progress. But sometimes we see that a society which was going to a totally different direction than is gifted by God with a view, new worldview and way of life. So. Muslims historically have named the era before Islam Asrul Jahiliyyah, the age of ignorance. And this by itself means a lot. They didn't call it the age of disbelief. They didn't call it Asrul Kufr. They didn't call it the age of sins. They called it Asrul Jahiliyyah, the age of ignorance. And in Islamic understanding, Jahiliyyah is not just not to know. It's more than that. Sometimes a person is Jahil because he doesn't know. But many times a person is considered to be Jahil even if he knows, if his actions are not rational and wise. Therefore, in Islamic collections of hadith, for example, like Usul al-Kafi, the first section is Kitab al-Aql wal jah is the book on intellect and ignorance, not ilm wal jahl, not knowledge and jahl. Because jahl, ignorance means not to act rationally and wisely. Sometimes because you don't know, sometimes you know, but you don't benefit from your knowledge and act as people who don't know. As Imam Ali Salam said, Rabba aliman qatalahu jahluh wa ilmuhu ma'ahu there are many learned people who are destroyed because of their ignorance. They have knowledge, but their knowledge does not benefit them. So that was a society which was marked by ignorance, lack of rationality, and as a result, that society was very selfish. The tribes used to attack each other, used to loot, used to take other tribes' properties, confiscate, kill people, take as captives. Even sometimes in the same town like Medina, which was called Yathrib, the tribes were killing each other for decades. But Islam came and brought the light of guidance knowledge and more than knowledge rationality so the people who used to fight and kill each other then god made them brothers 
And in the Quran, God reminds people of this great gift of brotherhood. When people were on the edge of hell by killing each other, by hostility, but then God made them brothers and brought their hearts together. So the prophet of Islam introduced a new way of life. Unfortunately, we don't have time to talk about those different elements. I would like also to refer just to some of them and then focus on the issue of benevolence or ihsan, which is relevant to our topic today. Islamic way of life is based on few elements. One element is deep commitment to truth. Truthfulness is the very key element. If you study carefully the Quran and Hadith, you find haqq or truth is the most fundamental value in Islam. In my study of ethics, I have a firm believer that the most fundamental value in Islamic ethics is truthfulness and even justice and other virtues all originate from truthfulness. So when there is truth, then it means that there is something greater than me or my group or my tribe or than even my religion. And that is truth. And truth by nature is universal. And every person has the same share in truth as other people. So if we are committed to truth, we would no longer be selfish, we would no longer be greedy, we would no longer be fighting without any reason. All the fightings that have taken place for promotion of either one person's ego or a tribal ego or even, you know, sectarian ego, they have no rational, wise basis. Commitment to truth can put an end to all these fightings. This is one element. Another element of Islamic way of life which originates from commitment to truth is that it is science-based way of life. Science, whether it be humanities, whether it be empirical sciences are all welcome and they have to help us in the way that we lead our life. In a society in which science or scientists and scholars have no high regard, that is a society of jahiliyyah. In a society in which the scholars, the scientists, the students, the universities, the schools, seminaries, books, publications, research institutes are highly regarded this is a society that can help people to prosper. And this is a society in which people can move faster towards God. Not a society which is close-minded. A society in which there is no regard for science or research. Another aspect of Islamic way of life was justice. And Islamic requirement for justice actually very high. The Quran says, you have to observe justice even with respect to your enemies. Unfortunately, sometimes people, when they have enmity or when they are wronged by other people, they take this as an excuse to say, okay, because this person has wronged me, this people has deprived me from justice, I am going to do the same. But Quran says no. Even if you have been dealt with injustice, you have to be just. Do not let your hostility towards some people make you unjust. You must be just. Justice, even with respect to enemies, even with respect to the people who were trying to destroy you, is closer to piety. Another element is Ihsan. 
wal ihsan ihsan doing good benevolence is more than justice so not only you should observe the rights of people even with your even if they are your enemies you have actually to be channels for god's mercy to other people you have to do ihsan whatever you can do to make the condition of life for other people or even for animals and plants better you have to do it as a moral and religious responsibility so muslim cannot live in a society and not try to make that society better i would like to end with just a point about bismillah ar-rahman ar-rahim you all know that bismillah ar-rahman ar-rahim is the motto for muslims we start all activities with bismillah ar-rahman ar-rahim and all the chapters of the quran apart from chapter 9 start with bismillah ar-rahman ar-rahim there is a reflection i would like to share with you we say in the name of god who is rahman which means who has all embracing mercy his mercy includes everyone and everything and who is rahim which has also additional mercy for good people this is a model for muslim way of life some people think that maybe you should only be concerned about your family or your own religious community forget about other people or some people think we should consider everyone the same but bismillah ar-rahman ar-rahim gives us a practical lesson all your activities as much as possible should be a manifestation of divine acts who is rahman and rahim a believer should try to be as much as possible an example of god who has all embracing mercy and who has also additional mercy for good people so it means that all our projects our activities as much as possible should be done in the way that can benefit everyone but at the same time not to forget the people who are under a special need the people who are closer to you the people you know more about their need your family your community you're not you don't need to sacrifice them but your vision must be as far as it can reach not only all humanity but all creation of god because you want to be also an example of rahman as rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa sallam who was bil mu'minin ar-raouf ar-rahim but at the same time he was rahmatun lil alamin so he was a manifestation of rahman and at the same time a manifestation of rahim i ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless our session today and inspire us to have very fruitful discussions thank you very much Also im Osmanischen Reich äh, gab es natürlich auch ähm, ja, Akteure der Zivilgesellschaft, also in 